joining us right now is Strategic Wealth Partners Investment Strategist Luke Lloyd. Luke, great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. We're also looking ahead to the September hey, jobs report out on Friday. And then, of course, very soon after, we'll get third quarter earnings uh, news uh, as we await corporate America and their guidance for the rest of the year in 2023. What are your thoughts on the macro story in the jobs market? Yeah, so here's the thing, Maria. One of the most important lessons I learned having a background in mathematics is that numbers can lie. Numbers can be manipulated to tell so many different stories. And the fact that people are still using the job market to highlight the strength of the economy absolutely blows my mind. I mean, there are more people than ever that have two jobs to support their family, and that's one of the main reasons that the job numbers look so good. Combine that with the lowest productivity rates ever seen in history, and the job market is essentially on its last foot, and the shoe is about to drop. You know, the two main key factors for the economy right now, and when we get back to some sort of stable growth in the economy and the stock market, is all relying on the job market and inflation. Everyone talks about inflation, but nobody talks about what the unemployment rate looks like when inflation comes back down to 2 or 3%. So that's the key to the economy and what will determine everything from growth in the economy all the way to default rates in the economy. So I think unemployment probably goes higher than most people think, and it'll be upwards probably of 5% or 6%. When you build a, and fuel an economy with stimulus and debt for 13 years straight since 08 and 09, yeah. the economy needs to reset, and the labor market's a big part of that. So what is that going to mean for corporate earnings? What will that mean for the stock market? Obviously, it's all about inflation. We are uh, looking at 40-year highs, and that has impacted markets. Although the 10-year Treasury, after hitting 4%, has come down. Uh, we've got national debt topping $31 trillion for the first time. And this morning, the 10-year is up seven basis points at 3.708%. You're saying one of the biggest worries out there is levered companies uh, as interest rates rise. Tell me about the impact on markets and the macro story to what sounds like to me you think is deteriorating. Yeah, again, the stock market and the economy was fueled by debt, low-cost debt, since 2008 and 2009. So with rates rising so quick over the past six months, a lot of the companies are getting shocked as the cost of debt rises, right? So many people don't realize a lot of debt financed by companies are through floating rates, which means they, uh, debt becomes more expensive as interest rates rise. So a lot of companies didn't expect rates to rise this much this quick, right? So it's really important to understand which companies you own, and that's why you want to stay away still from a lot of growth companies, because they are highly levered companies. The other part is, Maria, a lot of people live in their own echo chambers. They don't understand what it's like out there. You know, I was just in Beverly Hills and spoke at a conference, and many people, you know, are, still aren't thinking twice out there about spending money. They're living in their own echo chamber. Mm. I came back to Ohio and was at an event yesterday where all people could talk about was the free food and free gadgets people were giving out, right? So I think a lot of people still don't realize how bad it is out there, and 8% earnings growth for 2023 is very excessive, in my opinion. Uh, Luke, the people I grew up with and all my family members and friends in the rural South know how bad it is. But to your point, so we're talking about debt. Stephanie Pomboy tweeted this, our br brilliant favorite lady, yep. that we are one day, this was yesterday, we're one day in to the fourth quarter. The, it's not off to a great start in terms of credit quality. Four high yield downgrades for one upgrade. That's an up down ratio of 0.25. We were running the other way last summer, three to one. That's, That's one thing to point uh, to watch out for. But in terms of like the employment picture and inflation. So yesterday, job openings fell. This was in August. Layoffs were up slightly. Openings fell by 10 percent. That was talked about as something that the Federal Reserve might be uh, looking for or wanting to see. But that this is the kind of slowdown you don't want to have. So if employers are skittish and pulling back, that hurts supply, but it doesn't hurt the demand side where consumers keep spending. So you get this slowdown in the economy. This is the very type of slowdown driven by the supply side that you don't want to see. It might take for consumers to really pull back, like the neighbor's house gets sold for $100,000 
dollars less. Mm. It might take that <clears throat> long. So you have an economic slowdown, but inflation that still needs fighting by the Federal Reserve. And I think that's something the markets are trying to grapple with here. Yeah, layer on to that higher oil prices, Luke, because OPEC Plus is meeting this morning, and we're expecting 2 million barrels a day of a cut, biggest supply cut since 2020. So all of Dagan's uh, narrative here in terms of the slowing economy, what you don't want, the worst thing you want on top of that is a higher oil price. No, you're exactly right, Maria. I, mean, I think it's absolutely shocking that OPEC is looking to cut the supply. This could be one of the biggest mistakes I think I've seen in a long time uh, since, you know, really we printed all the money and all the stimulus in the economy. I mean, we are still in an energy crisis, and winter is about to come. When natural gas prices are high, the world relies on oil and coal. No, not solar, not wind, right? So the combination of high demand and low supply could be very favorable for oil prices through the end of the year. So the thing that frustrates me, Maria, is what got us into this mess in the first place. Leftist policies like the push towards renewable energy and ESG investing led us into the world energy crisis we're having right now that's imp impacting inflation. Hmm. I don't think people realize how bad it is over in Europe. People literally can't afford to turn on their lights. We might be looking at a similar situation here in America soon. Really dangerous stuff. Luke, thanks very much for weighing in on all of that. We will bring you all of those headlines coming up thanks, this morning.